Well, heading out now to Free State. I really love that show. And I'm heading out early because I know I always run into traffic and I'm really trying to... I think for smaller shows, I always figured, hey, I'll get there in plenty of time. I don't have much to set up. I'm hoping today is gonna go really well. I'm hoping the day will be fantastic for everybody at the show. And I'm hoping that everything else will uh, be fine as far as traffic, attendance. The weather seems fine. It was sort of brisk this morning. I've, I've got a light jacket on, which is always great. So the show was interesting. It was a lot of fun. And as usual, it was put on very well. No problems with that. I'm not really sure what happened because I know sales were happening around me. I think the hardest thing about so much of this, when you do a show and you don't make any money, and I mean, I literally made zero money. You just have to question what you bring and did I do something? And I don't understand how I can do a show that was literally a mile and a half from the Granada. And in that circumstance, at the Granada, I did fantastic. And then I come to this show and it just didn't work. I don't know exactly what that means. I really don't. I, I wish I did because the problem for me at, at the end of the day is just, is it that random? Now, at least with the next show that I have coming up, I'm hoping since that's the show that I've done very well at prior, that I'll have the same luck and same outcome. But I'm not gonna lie, right? You have a show that doesn't end up going well for you, you really do begin to wonder whether or not your luck has run out again. Luna, I've gotta get this video made. What are you doing? Hmm? She's just gonna cat. There was a really great conversation I had at the show. And what it revolved around was how special are shows now? Every single show seems to be trying to do the same sort of thing. They're inviting people, whether it's artists or you know actors or different types of creatives and things. And the argument could be made, especially within a geographical area, that if you have show after show after show after show, are you not just ending up putting brand new dressing on the same vendors, the same creators, the same artists, the same people that buy the tables to sell things. How different is the audience that each one is drawing? What is the difference? It could be something like, well, we focus on video games or we focus on creators or something, but there almost always seems to be this underlying thematic aspect where they'll go also say, but we also do this as well. And that line can deteriorate really quickly when you're trying to make money, when you're trying to promote, when you're trying to help the people that are part of your show. Now, I don't believe for a second that that happened here with either Free State or FanCon or any of the shows, really. I genuinely believe at the bottom of all of these shows, is the drive to try and make them stand out and be unique. And they had been doing that long before I had been involved with any of them. But the key here still remains that an oversaturation of a market here in Kansas City and really in Missouri in general, and probably this is an issue that I imagine happens in other areas, at least from what I'm seeing across Reddit and Twitter and Facebook and other places that I see what sort of shows are going on. You combine that with an economy that can kind of be doing this, right? Things are changing whether we want to admit it or not. And change is the biggest factor in this. Unfortunately, a lot of shows can still be mired in either, well, we've always done it this way and marketing is hard or how do I change this or what do I do? And that isn't to make fun of anyone. I struggle with it all the time in my business, all the time. I make plenty of video content but is it targeted at the right audience? Is it doing the job it needs to be? There are videos I'm doing right now that are in the process, a bunch of them on this phone, some on the computer, some on my iPad, in different states of completion that I'm completely reinventing what I'm attempting to do with my marketing, my video content, with other stuff 
I'm going to put out there. And I feel that shows have to evolve and do the same sort of thing. You can go into any town, and if you don't understand what the basic demographic of that town is and what it can do, if it doesn't show up for your show, how do you pull from further out? What is the draw? What brings people in? And what makes your show different than everything else? And that's a loaded question because as a creator, I have dealt with, here is my original stuff. And there's not always a lot of interest for that. Thankfully, I've had quite a few people over the years that have accumulated and I can sell stuff like that. But there's still going to be a strong draw for fan art of familiar IPs and nostalgia. And I feel that shows can fall into that same sort of, you know, little sector of thought. And I don't blame them. I mean, they're trying to do the best they can to survive and to grow. But I also think that it can become unfortunately, a little bit too competitive. Over the next three months, October, November, and December, there is going to be a wild smattering of shows commanding the attention of everyone's wallets and time to attend, to buy tickets, to get into places, to do things. The simple math breaks it down this way, and I'll end it with this. If you're paying $5 to get into a show, that's pretty manageable. If a show is free, it may not have as much of a luster because, well, it's free. I don't, I can always go catch the next one. But $5 almost signifies, hey, getting in there. $10 is pretty acceptable too, depending on the size of the show. You start getting up into the 25 to 30 per person and no discounts on children or maybe even like a small, a smaller amount for kids. Either way, an extended family of four is going to run you over $70 to get into a show. If you're going to bigger shows, you're talking a couple hundred dollars, depending on how many people are in your family. And if you're taking a weekend pass or just whatever, when you take that out, what is really left for the artists who may have had to pay for tables? Some get them, you know, comped, some have to pay a lower fee. And many of us, I know this because I've lived it for years, have to pay full price. And when tables can run anywhere from like, I've, I've done shows where I've either gotten, you know, free tables because the show is free for everybody, or I've gotten somewhere tables were 10 or $15 just to kind of cover the costs of the base, you know, rental of the tables to a couple hundred dollars. And I question every single time, like, what the hell is that for? And it's just as insane when you do an outdoor fair and you're paying for a 10 by 10 foot square of asphalt that any other day of the week, you could park your car there. You could stand there. Now you might pay a parking fee, but you're not paying a couple hundred dollars. You do the plaza, you're paying 500, used to be a thousand. And all of these challenges are mired up and connected to the fact that you also still have to figure in that there are other shows happening. And not everyone is gonna make the differentiation between the shows. It's as simple as that. And I feel like a lot of times, just like I said earlier, <clears throat> I went and did this show and I did love it. I don't want anyone to take this wrong. I don't care if I enjoy a show, I'm gonna do it because it's the people involved and it's what it is because eventually I will make money. I will get, you know, something back out of it. And most of the time I do just from being able to be social and talk to people. But if I'm trying to make a living at this, I also have to be realistic and understand what's happening. And there were discussions that I've been part of at other shows where people have talked about, is it on the vendors to help promote this show or should the show really be doing this? You know, especially if they're charging for tables. I don't know, it's a mixed bag. And unfortunately the really big shows are never challenged on this because they're the big guns in town. And everyone wants to be a part of that and wants to be a part of that, you know, of that win. But I think I can equivocate it to this. If the Chiefs win the Super Bowl, what do you get out of it? go buy a shirt, you hang out. I'm going to get a lot of fucking hatred from Chiefs play fans, football fans in general. I'm sorry. I just, it's how I look at it. And it, you know, and it's not, I understand home team spirit and all this other stuff, but I can say the same thing for any shows, right? I buy their merchandise or I pay $200. If I only make 50 bucks at a show, or if I don't sell enough or I make table, then that also means I just covered my table, but I didn't actually make anything. Now, you know, the cost for food, for fuel, for, 
you know, just dry, you know, just the wear and tear on the vehicle or maybe staying at a hotel or anything else like that ebbs into that, you know? And I understand plenty of people running shows. It can be hard to do that. And it is a challenge. I don't envy that. I could never run a show. I know I couldn't. I don't, I don't have the mental fortitude to be able to do half of the crazy stuff that I've seen people that do shows go through. I just, I break, I'd be like, I, I just, there'd be nothing, you know? So I do appreciate it. But I guess the reason I'm saying this, and I'll end with this, where are we headed? How much longer can this hold out? The whole nostalgia thing. Are we going to see, you know, a deprecation, you know, where the shows start to ebb away to something smaller, more akin to what it was like in the 80s, maybe even the early 90s, where it was more stratified into a smaller set of shows and they were less common. I think the older we get, we're going to start seeing that happening, but I don't know that for sure. What I do hope I see happen is that maybe there'll be more respect in the community among the people that run each other's, you know, that run shows and understand that, hey, this show is doing a good job. What can I do that's different? Not to say, hey, don't do a show. What else do you bring that makes it unique and makes it memorable and makes it stand out? aside from really expensive tickets to attend it. I don't know. That's so much better than the 17 minute soliloquy kind of bullshit I just went on about. And ooh, oolong tea, I just made some. This is normally a dollar a can when I find it. That's the, it's just amazing, no sugar, it's fantastic. I'm gonna shut up now, it's really late. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys, I'll catch you in my next journal.